Hello everybody, it is Thursday, it is 7pm GMT and that could only mean one thing. My name is Mary Moo and for the next hour I'm going to be with you right here on the Ruak radio show from 7 to 8pm and today is going to be a bit different. It's going to be a bit different today because the person who we're going to be chatting with, the person who we're going to be sort of interviewing, having conversations with is myself. I thought, you know, we've been having conversations with a lot of people and we've got very more, many more that, you know, we're really excited about. Um, but today we're going to strip things back and I am going to be having a, a conversation. I'm going to be in the hot seat um, and explaining a couple of things a bit more about myself, a couple of things that I've been, you know, doing and um, things I've been learning. And essentially I'm going to be dropping how I found myself here in Birmingham, living in Birmingham. So, Let's kick things off with some great music. Let's start off with this and then we'll, 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 we'll get into it. So we're going to be kicking things off with Lamborghini and Beanie Man. Um, count your blessings. And I don't know if any of you know these, Lam, Lam and Ling. Um, if you're on TikTok, if you're on um, Instagram, YouTube, you've probably heard of these, these two people. They're a couple. There's obviously this husband and a wife. And they're the ones who like prank themselves. They do the funniest, the funniest things to each other. I just, I, I just don't know how they don't. I can't clock that this this is not really this is a prank and they fall for it every time I'm um, trust me if you need a big if you need a pick me up if you want to laugh if you want to feel good go and find um Lamb and Link's page on YouTube on TikTok on Instagram wherever it is trust me you're gonna feel good but um this track is, is a great one it's probably I guess his biggest release and and they seem so chuffed about it and they're so sweet um and it's it's a really fun great track so I thought let's just get things going with them so here is Lamborghini and Beanie Man with Count Your Blessings and we'll be right back life is count your blessings life is full of blessings thank God for his mercy we pray Waking up is a miracle. Open your eyes to the sunshine. Brush your teeth and wash your face. Step aside and live your life. What a day to be alive. Manifesting all of my greatness. With my mouth, me testify. To all of your goodness, me sing. Thank God for mercy. Counting my blessings. So many blessings. Everything I do. Kick you like a ninja Bad mind a fly to your body like a sprinter Anytime you see me not the Mercedes sprinter Lyrics just a fly to me head like a printer Just send me as a messenger Him a the avatar, me a the passenger No real leaders, no bother than my jaja Release the chain from the brain of me black brother Money fi make, no bother friend It no matter who want come next My youths a feel no success Yes, them now walk and beg No man bread and now be nobody press So thank God for me Counting my blessings, so many blessings. Everything I do by grace, by grace. Thank God for mercy. Counting my blessings, so many blessings. Everything I do by grace, by grace. No be say no be holy pass. No be say no be sabi pass. No be say no be say no be say no be get it pass. No be say no be sing it pass. No no no. So many under pressure for what they cannot control. No no. Give thanks and give it to God before you lose control. Shine your light, shine it so bright like a diamond. Shine it so bright. Shine your light, shine it so bright like a diamond. Shine it so bright. Shine your light, shine it so bright. Like a diamond shining so bright Shine your light, shine it so bright Like a diamond Thank God for mercy Counting my blessings So many blessings Everything I do by grace By grace Thank God for mercy Counting my blessings So many blessings Everything I do by grace By grace Thank God for mercy Every day we leave when we come back Safely, thank you. Every day we leave home, we come back safely. Thank you. Thank God for mercy. Give her my blessing. 
Everything I get, I get by bless. Yes! By bless, if you don't bless, I hear a fall. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. We've just been listening to a great little song um, by Lamborghini and Beanie Man. Count your blessings. And for those of you who don't know who Lamborghini is, he is part of uh, a duo with his wife. And they share their life, their relationship on social media. But in a funny way, they do pranks. They're the ones who do pranks on each other. And funny things just seem to happen to them. And I think what makes their relationship so unique is Lamborghini is a typical Nigerian man who's found himself somehow in in Canada I believe with his wife um and the funniest of things happen it's the culture clash it's the what's happening here and what do you mean and it's funny trust me going if you if you want to laugh and want to feel good just find them on social media so anyway that was the husband lamb's um, song count your blessings with beanie man and you are here with me, Mary Moo, on the Rack Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Um, I'm here every Thursday, if you don't know, from 7 to 8 p.m. And usually what I do is I um, I interview people. I like to have conversations with people and chat and uh, kind of learn from them and things like that. But today, something's a bit different. The interviews and the talks and the chats is going to be with myself. I thought it's a good idea to sort of strip things back a bit kind of introduce myself and really talk about some things I've been learning before we get back into next week with you know talking to other different people and we've got a whole roster of good people we're going to be having conversations with and I think every now and then I would step in and I would do a really good chit chat and I did say what I am going to be doing is I'm going to be um, revealing or explaining how I found myself living here in Birmingham. So something significant happened in my life um, that made me kind of move out here. And I'm going to break it all down and hopefully it all makes sense and I'll encourage you. Before we begin, we've obviously been talking about relationships with Lang and Lim and how funny they are and how great the relationship, blah, blah, blah. It's all great. And I thought I'll follow up with this, uh, you know, keeping the momentum about love. When it was, uh, what was it? Uh, Valentine's Day, a friend of mine asked me, oh, Mary, you've got loads of nieces and nephews. I do. I have like 14 um, nieces and nephews. You've got loads of nieces and nephews. Can you get them to record to me what they think um, love is all about? So from a child's perspective, they wanted to use it for a, a campaign or a project they were doing. Can you please get them just to record, just ask them what, what does love mean to them and see what they say? Guys, are you ready? I was able to convince three of them to do it. And this is what they said. They believe love is all about. Let's go. <laughs> love is a red heart that kind of means like you're hugging someone. That's an example of love and showing them um, helpful things. That's kind of like love. Um, love is kissing someone on the street and hugging them and... Um, when you're from their belly and then you come out, that's why you love them. And then when they're so cute, you love them. So that's it. Because you love yourself. Is it because you love your parents? Is it because you love babies and play with them? And if you love somebody, then then you get you um you share the Chris. Um, if you don't share, then if you don't, then no more Chris. If you do, then you do get crisp. One word, everybody. Crisps. <laughs> Who would have thought Chris had anything to do with love? Isn't it just so sweet? They're the cutest human beings ever. They're just the cutest. And I thought we have to share that. We have to kind of share, um, you know, their take on love. It's the cutest. And, I, and you know, we was, I was talking to one of their parents saying we probably might bring them on, like, to another, on another show and be asking them, you know, questions. What do you think about this? And just getting things from a child's perspective. And the reason why I thought I'd drop that into today's show is because the reason why, you know, I explain about my... Um, how I got to Birmingham, I think of that in a minute. But the, the, to obviously set the stage for that really is about being childlike. It's that whole Matthew 18, um, verse 1 to 3, where, you know, Jesus is telling his disciples, look, listen, guys, 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 it's not about who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, but, you know, you have to come as a child. He says, truly I say unto you, unless you turn and become like a child, you will never, you will just never enter the kingdom of heaven. It's not going to happen for you. And a, a lot of what, you know, I took from that is, 
you know how as a child how innocent they they are and how they literally take things how they literally um can believe what we say I'm, and i'm not saying and i don't believe in any way jesus was saying look guys go and be, be bewitched be lied to and just kind of live in some sort of fantasy i don't believe that at all actually in the slightest I believe he was saying a lot of things about how our approach to things, because as we grow, we, we start adding our own mind and our own beliefs and a lot of the the experiences and our own thoughts and our prejudice and our disbelief. And we've been hurt there. So I don't believe that. And all this kind of thing, we add all those complex things into the equation and it can be difficult to sometimes take God's word as it is, but it's very important to, to take, to read the scriptures and literally take God's word for what it is. Well, obviously when you apply faith and I'll talk a bit about that in a, in a second, but that's how, you know, Jesus tells us to do things because the same way you can tell a child this is you know this is what it is and they will believe or explain to them what love is and they'll take it literally as it is it's the same way we have to take god's word literally as it is and apply it with faith and i know it can be funny because there was one time when um you know it can go horribly wrong <laughs> with children believing the wrong things i do remember one time there was we did a christmas um, you know, a, the crucifixion of Christ at, at a church that I was going to once. And it was, you know, it was really, really good. I, I felt it was really, really good. And uh, somebody we knew, one of my friends was was the actor, he was Jesus. And he was being uh, beaten, um, not really, but obviously beaten. So he was really acting out like, oh, oh, doing all of that business. And it was really, really good. Everyone felt it was really, really touching. But the next week I spoke to one of the aunties in the church. She was like, oh my word. <sighs> Her child went and told the school that they beat people in the church. They dragged them off and this man was crying and blah, blah, blah. And the school called because he, the child honestly really, really believed. So God's not asking us to believe something that is so drama, that's fantasy, that's not real. His word is real. And he wants us to take that and to um, really, really believe that and accept that. Um, and that's actually the basis for a lot of what I'm going to talk about in a minute, how I got to Birmingham and how my approach um, is to uh, my faith and my relationship with God. I thought I'd listen to some music because we haven't listened to some music for a bit. We are going to listen to, there's like, oh, there's a couple. I've got quite a good roster here of music we're going to listen to. So we're going to start with um, Alfine with Always and then Sharon, my girl, Sharon. Um, I don't know her, by the way. I just love her music. Sharon with um, Beautiful Saviour. And then um, Angie Rose and Poetics with Hearts and Pain. And then we'll be right back. And I, I will, I will explain how I moved from London to Birmingham or oh, why. Let's listen to some music. Let's go.
beautiful Savior I can see. You died on the cross for me. Beautiful Savior I can see. Your blood was shed for me. He said, Oh, I will. Beautiful Savior, I can see your heart on the cross for me. Beautiful Savior, I can see his hands, wounds that set me free. You said, Oh, I will.
Exceedingly, abundantly, more than I could ask for. Exceedingly, abundantly, more than I could ask for. When my heart's in pain, I call on your name. I need your living water. Walk with me through the spring. Puddles of water, follow me. Holy water, hallow be. That is the same Halloween. Your name, oh God, just don't change. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Mary Show, and I'm here every Thursday from seven to eight PM on Right Radio, right here, right where you've just sort of tuned in. Um, and we listen to great music, and we have good conversations with people, like we've just done now. So we've just been listening to um, our theme with always Sharin with beautiful Saviour and Angie Rose, and that was Hearts in Pain. It's just great songs that are about um, sort of in line with the topic of this episode, and I. I'm the, the person who is going to be talking the conversations and the interviews with me. <laughs> and But I thought, okay, let's just kind of explain to everybody how I got to Birmingham and why. Um, some years ago, something happened. Um, and that is, obviously, I decided to take seriously my relationship with God or, or have one in the beginning. Um, because a lot of spiritual things had happened in my life that um, really made me know for a fact that this world isn't black and white it just really isn't and you know growing up where I grew up it's a very um, Caucasian area um and things just a a bit obviously different from the culture that I my culture my in-home culture that you know I always kind of felt almost like (laughs) you know you adopt a culture obviously obviously being raised in here but then it's it's just the duel that you have to sometimes navigate through so things are not normal anyway but um spiritually um things in my life let me know that the world isn't just black and white it isn't what kind of seems to be out there and obviously I was a child then so obviously as as an adult now I realize that even those people whether you're Caucasian or Asian or black or whatever the same conversations in the head can happen into them the same situations of them thinking oh life isn't black and white depending where they are but for me I, I I I kind of realize that and growing up into my teens into my um early 20s I kind of thought right this this is this is really uh important to do and not terrible um spiritual situations I'll probably explain in another episode really but I'm talking about things where you um see angels and things that you're even scared to tell people about because you don't know how they're going to um to you know, whether they're going to believe or how they're going to understand it. But in my home, actual home where I grew up, it was, we all experienced that. We all had a lot of, you know, spiritual um, occurrences that happened to us. I can tell you testimonies, which I'm calling testimonies, um, from, I remember one time that sticks out in my mind, my brother was helping um, one of my family friend do the tiling and um, the tiles off the roof fell off but they did they fell off and they were about to hit my brothers on the head he didn't see this but the the um my family friend did and the the bricks just kind of separated but before it got to his head and fell either side of him and um many things like us you know saying oh you know mom and dad said that if you pray you can you can god can let you see things and we prayed and we literally saw literally saw the gates of heaven and and you know at my one of my parents friends um not being able to conceive and um and we said oh let's pray because my mom and dad said if you prayed you know you can there's gonna be a miracle and this lady had been trying to have a child and she for many years and she didn't and then we just prayed and 
nine months later she gave birth to a child and many many things that as much as you want to live life and be like i'm doing me i i'm i'm you know the, what you think you should be doing as a as a teenager um you can't forget those kind of um, instances you just really really can't um so i, I remember deciding okay i'm going to you know really take my relationship with god seriously and i really mean it this time so the things that are in the scriptures that say pray and heal i'm going to actually be doing those things because if that's what we're supposed to be doing it should work and happen i'm not even going to start wondering I'm, no i'm going to do it if you say that we should hear from you we can hear you speak god then that's what it is i'm just going to literally take it literally like we've just read and so that kind of kick-started a number of different um, occurrences kick-started me actually hearing from god through dreams um through many ways you, as you know you can but for me audibly as well i can i there's been many times when i've heard god speak to order like you're putting the earphones in your ear or it's out in the open however it is actually hearing god speak which has been a blessing in my life um and the reason why i think that's really important and as i've grown in my relationship with god i've realized that it it's it is important because any relationship really you really want to be talking with the communicating or talking with the the person frequently that's how you get to know them we can call it prayer or time with god or whatever it is but it's very very important and for me i just thought i'm just gonna take it literally then god if i speak to you if i'm talking to you you should you you should respond back um but the one thing, the one sort of scripture that's kind of made me realise why it's more important and why it very is important is, you know, we read Hebrews 11 where in, if you read Hebrews 11, it just has a, like a, um, an account of all these people who by faith did all these things, they did all these amazing things by faith by faith and when you start studying you realize the word that they that's reused there is trust so these people trusted god so much they they all every single one of them noah um, abraham and all of them they all heard from god they had a dis- an instruction to go and do this or whatever it is they all heard from god and they trusted him and it just produced great results so i thought mm, this word and trusting in god and um is very important. I must get to a place where I trust in God. And Romans chapter 10 verse um, 17 says, look, um, faith, tr- trust, that, that word, trust comes from hearing the word of God. And the word of God, when you break down what that means um, in, in the original um, language, it's it's Rema. It talks about the Rema. There's a difference between the Rema, like the living, breathing word of God and the written word of God. And it talks about the importance of both because they're both really important. But I like that it starts with that. It's very important to hearing the word. Trust comes from hearing this word of God, whether it's from the um, you go to church, however you hear it. But I think it's very personal as well. Hearing that Rema, that personal relationship with God, hearing God talk to you. Um, and also, obviously, we go ahead, go ahead and we, we we teach that with the Logos and we preach that or we evangelize with that word. But that to me really struck me and said, I really need to continue to be hearing live from God, that live Rema word from God to build my trust. Just like Abraham and um, Noah and all the people who were, that's documented in uh in Hebrews chapter 11, they all heard from God. Abraham heard, go and sacrifice your son. Oh, don't sacrifice him now. And if not for hearing, there will be problems. That wouldn't be the case now. Um, so that's kind of been a scripture that's kind of guided me. And this is how and why I, um, I, I came to Birmingham. So back in 2013, actually before that, every year we've been coming to Birmingham. We've been coming to the city through work. So work brought me um, here initially. Um, and we'll do like a like a HR event because that's the background I'm from. And um, you know when you stay in hotels and then you you can take home those that the, the soaps, the little soaps and the creams and the things like that. And every year I just wouldn't. I just be like, there's no point because I'm gonna be back here every. We <laughs> come here every year on clockwork so i'm not taking it back i don't know it reminds me of that episode in friends with with ross when they come back from their trip and he's got like a whole suitcase with it opens doesn't it, it mistakenly opens and he's filled with the soaps and the drinks and everything so i used to always be like nah i'm not taking it because i'm gonna be back i'm gonna be back i'm gonna be back i'm gonna be back, be back here blah 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 but then there was one um 2013 we went in January again to the HR event and we actually ha- held our own event as well on the side. And it did so well that my boss actually said at the time, we're not coming back. We're going to do our own ones because our ones are a bit more successful. We're, we're not just, we're not coming back. So I was like, oh, OK, fine. It's, it's been great. It's been wonderful, blah, blah, blah. But actually, that time that I was there, something was happening to me every single morning. So we were there for like three nights, I think. 
the first night I kept waking up like four o'clock in the morning and I kept thinking, oh, that's odd. Oh, I thought, oh, maybe I just need to settle or something. The second night I wake up four o'clock again, bang on four, poof, like that. And then my mum, obviously, I was speaking to her and she goes, oh, how are you guys getting on with your, your thing? And I said, I don't know, it's fine, everything's great and everything, but we're not coming back here again because Ian said so. But anyway, I keep waking up at four o'clock in the morning, like all the time. I don't know what it is. Like, I just keep waking up four and I, I don't get it. I, I, I like my sleep. I never do this sort of stuff. And um, my mum, obviously, thank God for my mum, actually, and for um, parents who can guide. She said, you know, Mary, when you wake up, if you, if you do again this night, um, just ask god and just say god is there any reason why i'm waking up at this time is do you do you want to tell me anything whatever it is just ask just ask god just talk to him you know um and find out or just ask him why just have a, have a conversation <laughs> about it. so okay fine i'll do that so that night again the last night that was there i slept and woke up again four o'clock and i remember i said oh and i was obviously waking up a bit still said it's four o'clock again I said oh god my mum said I I said these words my mum said you know I should ask you if there's anything why I'm waking up at four o'clock or why like what is this and then I had this overwhelming urge to for some reason go to the window um of the hotel we're staying so we were standing at the Malmaison um in Birmingham and said go there and look outside the window so I I don't know I just got up from the bed and I went drew the blinds and all I could see in in the night with all the lights the city the city of Birmingham it's like I could see the whole city from where we were and was I was just staring and I was like oh should I go outside it's like do I get dressed what's happening here but I knew I wasn't I just had to sort of stand there and look outside of the window for it was probably a good five minutes to ten minutes plus and then I thought all right I'll just go back to bed and I'll just pray and sleep, pray and sleep and then wake up again and do some more prayers before they continued the day and before I knew it was asleep again and I woke up but then that morning obviously I was packing everything because we was leaving that was the last day I was leaving and I went to the to the bathroom and they had um these the, the obviously the soaps and the the creams and things and at the Malmaison they were, they're quite big size and they actually had a sticker on them that says take me home so this is one is saying look we know you probably take these and just take it just take it just take it and I remember I said oh yeah I'm, I'm gonna take it now because we're not coming back so I grabbed them and put it all in my suitcase but the moment it kind of hit my suitcase I just knew there is I was gonna come back I don't know how to explain I just knew there was a knowing inside of me you are coming back here and I thought oh maybe I don't know I just thought oh, maybe I don't know maybe maybe he's gonna change his mind or something I didn't know I just left it and carried on the day now three years later so three years later I think in between that time I, I did keep in my mind that I might be going back and I would allude it to people I think I'm gonna go back to I'm, I'm gonna I don't know how I'm gonna get there why and I thought oh maybe because the church I was going to at that time they had a branch up in Burma so I thought maybe for some reason I'm gonna go there or something or I, I didn't even know why I just kind of pondered on it every now and then I would say it and blah 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 leave it but three years later the same kind of thing happened again so I wake up one morning four o'clock I was like oh four o'clock oh goodness I've got one wake up this time blah 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 didn't think anything of it I forgot what happened three years earlier I went straight back to bed and the second happened again. So this time now, there's a health shop by where I work. And I thought, oh, I know, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some lavender, some lavender essential oils. And I'm going to, um, you know, pop those on my pillow. And that will help me sleep. Because like, I don't know what's up with you. Maybe I'm stressed. Huh. So I remember thinking, I bought the lavender oils. No, I either bought them. I was going to buy them. I was in the shop checking. They didn't have any. No, yeah, they didn't have any in the shop. So I came back out. And then my aunt had called me because I used to, I, I still do I used to pray with my aunt and I we, we pray quite frequently all the time and she goes oh man would you would you be around this evening would we should do a prayer session I was like oh yeah of course yeah yeah of course yeah so um we started to do a prayer session that evening so I said I arranged it and then that time came and um we prayed about a couple of things and then she said oh is there anything else you want to pray about and I went oh yeah there's something that's happening to me I keep waking up at four o'clock in the morning you know and I I went to see if I can buy um some essential oils and stuff. There wasn't any in the shop for a reason, but I just keep waking up at four o'clock. I don't know if I'm stressed. I don't, I don't know. Something's happened to me. Can we just pray about that? She was like, oh yeah, of course, we'll pray about that because you can pray to God about anything. So we start praying about this, me waking up four o'clock every morning. And she went, oh, Mary, God's saying that, that you know, the reason why you can wake up at four o'clock is he needs to speak to you. And I went, oh, I heard this before. <sighs> Duh, I've heard this before. And she said, yeah, God's going to speak to you. So um, just when you... If it happens, if it happens again tonight, 
just wake up and just say, oh, God, speak to me. What, what, you're, what, you, what do you want to say? What are you saying? And blah, blah, blah. And so I was like, oh, okay, can I do that? And I felt a bit silly because this had happened to me before. And there's me in the shop trying to buy oils and stuff. So um, I went to sleep. And just like happened another time, I woke up, bang, up, four o'clock. We're going to have a quick break and then we're going we're gonna to play some music. And then when we come back, I'm going to tell you exactly what God said and what's been happening since. So we're going to go to some music because um, I do want this to be mixed of music and me, me talking, not just me waffling on for hours. So anyway, we're going to listen to a Melody, the song's called Direction. And a song is lovely. I love this song. It's, I haven't heard this one before. It's, an, it's, uh, it's a new song for me. And I don't know if you guys have heard it. It's called Freedom. And it's by um, Shervelin, um Desire. And it's a lovely song. So... I would like us to listen to that and then we'll be right back. Lately I've been in my head Trying to go back to what you said When I'm lost with no direction And it's hard to keep searching Told myself I'd make it through My own words hide the truth I'm in need of your perspective Cause these thoughts were unexpected To hold on to truth With no absolutes All I can do is look to the heavens Believe you are listening I know feelings are fleeting without direction Take my emotions and give them a reason I'm in need of something new Something that points me to you stops with you nothing will ever be the same your everlasting exchange hard to hold on to truth with no absolutes and all i can do is look to the heavens believe you are listening and i know feelings are fleeting without direction take my emotions and give them a reason I'm in need of something new Something that points me at you oh, I'm in need of something new yeah. Hold me back to you, Lord Oh
fire, you are the savior. We lift you higher, you the provider, you are my savior. Nobody likes me like you do. Nobody loves me like you do. Cause I need you like ja, 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 ja. You never let me go far. Your presence is holy, God, you keeping me safe. Your presence is holy, God, you giving me faith. Your presence is freedom, freedom, freedom. Your presence is freedom. Your presence is peace. You are the creator. Baba, you love me. You give me this life. Oh, I know you chose me. You open my eyes. Oh, you come, come for me. Nobody likes me like you do. Nobody loves me like you do. Cause I need you like ja, ja, ja. Your presence is holy, God, you keeping me safe. Your presence is holy, God, you giving me faith. Your presence is freedom, freedom, freedom. Your presence is freedom. Welcome back, everybody. This is The Mary Show, and I'm here every Thursday, 7 to 8 p.m. GMT. And we've been listening to some music. We've been listening to Melody Odono with Direction and a song I've just discovered um, called Freedom by um, Shelvin Desire. So great songs that kind of fit in with what I've been talking about really because i've been having conversations we usually have conversations here with other people with guests i like to bring in people who we talk to and we gain from them we learn from them we just have a great conversation about their lives and their stories and things like that um but um this week i'm in the hot seat and i've been letting everybody know how i found myself in birmingham but we've been talking about um having a relationship with god setting that sort of stage and understanding that it's to build our faith in god and to build our trust in god we need to hear from him um whether it's through the word and what we read which is the Logos, or hearing him directly speak in our ears. And that's essentially um, what I base my relationship with God on very heavily and how I found myself in Birmingham. So I was educating people, I was educating them, telling them about um, what happened to me um, and how I heard God speak. So I got to the part of the story how I went to bed at four o'clock. So I've been waking up four o'clock um, ev- um, every night, um, wondering why. And then uh, God always puts people in my life who tell me, oh, why don't you try asking God about that? <laughs> and I would sort of lend the same advice. If you keep, if that thing happens to you, write it down. And I tell people now, if they keep saying, oh, I woke up this sort of time, I'll say, have a pen and paper by you and just write down or ask God about it. Now I'm, a, you know, this campaign about it, but please go ahead and do that. Um, but yeah, so let's get back into it. Let's get back into it. So, what happened to me so I go four o'clock again I, I wake up in the morning and I actually said to God before I went to bed I said God you know something yeah I've got work <laughs> I've got work I've got to be up early and everything um you know if you are going to speak to me can you just start talking like the moment I wake up because oh, I, I don't want to start conjuring up a, like you know because I it's just gonna take a long long time and I just really <laughs> I need you just look at me stipulating with God you know but I just thought god you know can you just start talking because I just really need to know what it is I don't I don't want it, I think I don't want to it be like me I just if you're gonna you're waking me up like this and you want to say just say it like just say it nice and loud and clear so I can hear so that's me saying that and I go to bed four o'clock boom wake up and there I am um on my bed and for some reason my I, I'm really wide awake and I hear god speak to me 
And this sometimes I can hear God speak um, within me, like, you know, or overrides your thoughts. So, you know, this is definitely God speaking, obviously through dreams into different ways. And, you know, so often just I can hear God speak audibly, like, you know, how I'm speaking to you. And this was one of those times um, that I actually heard God speak audibly, like, like as if, like, almost like a earphone, earphones were in my ear. Um, and it was loud, but not shouty, but loud, almost like you're, like, almost like, I, I'm trying to explain it, but it's loud, but not threatening or anything in a way. And you can almost think everyone can hear, but they, you obviously can't because everyone's asleep. Um, and I heard God speak to me like, Boo. and the first thing God said to me was, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord God delivers us, delivers us, delivers us from them all. I will deliver you from them all. I didn't know at that time that was a scripture. I've come to know it is. It's a, it's a scripture was Verbatim. That's the first thing. It wasn't like, oh, good morning, Mary. I did what you said. It was kind of, God would just went, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord God delivers us from them all. I will deliver you from them all. And that was nice for me to know because actually um, there was a couple of things that were going on in my life at that moment. And I just didn't know how I can get out of certain things. This was 2016. A lot of things were happening. And a lot of it was to do with the house that I was trying to sell and, and other things. And I just felt really kind of afflicted really kind of um and I know affliction can mean different things but I felt like it was something was done to me outside of my control so that was very comforting for me to know actually oh God is going to deliver me from that all and then he said something straight after he said um I'm bringing a revival in Birmingham and I want you to be part of it and he set out a list of promises that would happen for me going that way if you would if I would go and um, that was it Pfft, like that i share those other things in due course but that was that was it like, just like that like a like a radio got switched off Pfft, that was it and i remember thinking oh wow birmingham <laughs> and that was three years later that was when i heard there was it was because god's going to bring a change and a revival in birmingham since then at that time i've learned a lot of the reasons why because at that point 2016 a year after um, and I know this because I went to a gas street church um, up in Birmingham. We're doing a uh, business event. And I was living, still living in London at the time. And my sister found it. She goes, oh, in Birmingham, they're doing this event. Um, should we go? So off we went to this um, business event there. Um, and one of the things they let us know that actually at that time, 2017, what had been lifted was 70, it was a 70 year ban in Birmingham to, to sort of stifle development, stifle growth. And guys, I know, you know, Instagram is that the whole this whole negative campaign about Birmingham being the bin. I'm fully aware of all this sort of stuff, but there's a reason why it it was like that, and this was a political thing that was put in place, which you can obviously um, read in articles, that was lifted only around 2017. So for 70 years there was a a ban to stop the place from growing, and that was being lifted, and it made me know that actually I couldn't have come any a second earlier a day earlier, a year earlier than the time when it had been lifted for a specific reason. God was bringing about revival, uh, you know, bringing back uh, passion, him, life, all sorts of things was going to be happening in Birmingham and I wanted to be a part of it. And since that time, obviously since moving here, um, God is speaking to other people about this exact same thing, including um, the, the pastor of um, our church, which is so, so wonderful how God speaks. Pockets of people have been spoken to who live within Birmingham, who are outside of Birmingham, that look, something's going to be happening here. And I've seen it in manifestation, actually seen it happening. And that's something, another thing about when God speaks is that there has to be a manifestation of it. It can happen three years later, five years later, 10 years later, how many years later it will, and it must come to pass because it's a true living word of God. And that's the proof is in the pudding in, in what God's saying. That was confirmed in, in reality. And as I've been living here since 2019, I've seen... I, I mean, I've been, I've seen it. I've been seeing and witnessing uh, an awakening, uh, you know, a, a fire, events happening here, and things change happen all across the city that I feel so happy to be a part of. I came here actually in the thirty first of December, twenty eighteen. Through redundancy, brought me here. Um, twenty nineteen, I started living here, and like I said, it was twenty thirteen that I was told something was I knew something was going to be happening that I was going to be moving back it's taken a long time of today is it's now like 10 years it's 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 about 10 coming up to 10 years since I heard that since I heard 
when all this thing was going down, you know, it's, yeah, it's been 10 years. And now I find myself um, in the place that I thought I wouldn't come back to. And secondly, t- since 2016, when God told me, look, this is why I want you here. And I thought I'd tell that story um, because people have always wondered, you know, why, why did you go there? And have made assumptions or just wondered, why did you move? Why, what, you know, you were living in London, one of the greatest cities of the world. Like, why would you go and stuff like that? But I would encourage people this. If God sends you a place, if God lets you, tells you to go to a place that people probably don't want to go to, whatever it is, it will come with blessings. And God, it, God is going to do something there. It's going to be part of a change. You're going to be part of something great. And there's so many examples in the scriptures of God sending people to, to places and seeing um, the, the change and seeing, um, you know, how it's brought them blessings in their life. Abraham is one of them, one of the founding fathers of the faith. Get up and leave her. You're, leave her on. Leave, leave your, what you know and go to the land which I tell you to go. It it will bless you and your whole family, your whole generation. And the same thing is for me. It's not just about me. This is about what God wants to do to in a beautiful city that I live in. Um, and uh, it does come with blessings that God will take care of me and look after me in that. And I've had an absolute wonderful time since being here. And I just thought I'll share that because there's many more um, stories I want to break down and, and talk about. But I think it's important just to kind of share this and encourage anybody else who God's been speaking to you about something and you're just wondering what it is. Number one, be patient. Patience is one thing because I didn't just, I, and to be fair, let's, let's, let me just admit something to you. 2013, when I first hold, had all this, I went and did my passport because I was convinced that maybe maybe I'll, I'm going to go somewhere because I li- worked for an international company then. I didn't see that I would ever leave the company because there was scope for growth and I was having a blast there with my colleagues and stuff. I thought maybe they're going to send me internationally to Atlanta or somewhere. Or maybe I'm going to, you know, you think all these things with your human mind, but patience, let me know, actually know. And I'm just so glad life has evolved in this kind of a way. So just be patient and trust God. If he can speak something now, and I listened to a message that said, actually, God can say something (laughs) to you and you think it's going to happen that day or that week or that year even. And 10 years later, he's be right back. He's burb (laughs) is like 10, 20 years later. So you've got to be patient and be trying to and pray to understand what you've been told understand what it means write it down since that 2016 i'll keep looking at it looking at it looking at it and when i eventually moved that 2019 um, my pastor said oh god's been speaking to her about a revival coming here i went oh me too <laughs> and i went and spoke to her and i realized then it was other people and it's just so nice when god starts saying right now is the time we're now in the year of alignment for these things to be happening so i thought i'd leave you with that with that encouragement um and next week we'll be back with other people talking and I hope you've enjoyed this little chit chat with me and stuff like that but be encouraged trust in God you want to know how to build your trust in God you want to know how to do great things out of faith out of trust is get to know God have that relationship with him get to understand how he speaks to different dreams for different and it can be tough to try and say God interpret my dreams behind me. what am I meaning what are you saying blah 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 but it's worth it because it will guide you it will lead you, you never know where God wants to send you where God wants to um lead you i remember listening watching actually a um or reading sorry reading a uh a post that um charlotte reed put on her thing so that not god's not sending everybody to america or something like that and it's funny because god can send all you to birmingham or to liverpool or to wherever in the world but just go wherever he's calling you to go it will it will really really help you so let's close out with some great music um and i will see you next week um, for another good chit chat and um, we're going to listen to um Darius Jones with Flower Pots and we will end with Kojo Dave with Secret Place yeah. till next time uh, take care everybody uh, I wish I could tell you how we go oh man and I wish I could tell you that I know my plan I wish this was easy like a finger oh 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 it's sad the friends I used to have had to go oh 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 man but I guess that happens when the Flower Pots grow when the flower pies grow, yeah, I guess that, yeah, I guess that happens when the flower pies grow. Oh, oh, oh. That's just something I should know. I'm just really trying to cope, cause I'm learning how to go, 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 go. I'm just gonna go and let my flower pie grow, grow, grow. I'm just gonna go and let my flower pie grow. Oh, oh. That's just something I should know, cause I'm learning how to cope. I'm just
just really trying to grow, grow I can't even lie, I never thought I'd be right where I am I relied on sight, kept me in circles like a ferris wheel Now I close my eyes and I just listen to the words you say I know plans I have for you If you would just walk by faith, yeah You just walk my way, yeah I'll take all your pain, yeah Just call on my name, yeah I'll provide the rain Sometimes I don't know where to go I just cry and let it go I just thought I'd let you know You say yes, that happens when the fire pops when the flower pies grow, yeah, I guess that, yeah, I guess that happens when the flower pies grow. That's just something I should know. I'm just really trying to cope, cause I'm learning how to go, 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 go. I'm just gonna go and let my flower pie grow, grow, grow. I'm just gonna go and let my flower pie grow, oh, oh. That's just something I should know, cause I'm learning how to cope. I'm just really trying to grow. Okay, I wonder why I moved, don't understand it. Never know how stars align, I'm wasting time here trying to plan it. Where the sand is, I thought I would be right where the tin is. Then I'm pushing foreign cars, it's hard to drive like Sanders. Whoa, I'm just ready, give me time to get right in my mind before placing the test. Cause some people trying, they try, but they just ain't trying to clean up a mess. Whoa, I had three strikes like a turkey, and I know that I'm not worthy. I just thank God for his mercy. Yes, that happens when the flower pies grow. When the flower pies grow. Yeah, I guess that. Yeah, I guess that happens when the flower pies grow. That's just something I should know. I'm just really trying to cope. Cause I'm learning how to go. Go, 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 go. I'm just gonna go and let my flower pie grow. Go, go, I'm just gonna go and let my flower pie grow. That's just something I should know. Cause I'm learning how to cope. I'm just really trying to grow. Go, go, uh, uh, go, uh, 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 yeah, I guess that's gonna fly past. Go, uh, 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 yeah, I guess that's gonna fly past. Go, uh, 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 yeah, I guess that's gonna fly past. Go, when the flop, when the flop, when the flop. But I guess that happens when the fly past. Go, go, when the flop, when the flop, when the flop. Yeah, I guess that, yeah, I guess that happens when the flop past. Go, uh, uh, uh. That's just something I should know. I'm just really trying to cope. Cause I'm learning how to go. Go, 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 go. I'm just gonna go and let my flop by go. Go, go, I'm just gonna go and let my flop by go. That's just something I should know. Cause I'm learning how to cope. I'm just really trying to go. Go, go. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear no Valley, valley. I will not fear no evil. Lord, send fire upon my enemies, my enemies. Lord, send fire upon my enemies, my enemies. Weapon is strong, curses aiming at me, aiming at me. So I keep them Bible verses on me, verses on me. Holy Ghost, need you to come to do the most. They are toast Principalities getting mad at me I never boast Yahweh be the goat So I will dwell in your secret place I will dwell in your secret place Lord send fire upon my enemies My enemies Lord send fire upon my enemies My enemies Weapon of strong curses aiming at me Aiming at me so I keep them Bible verses on me, verses on me. La 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 Better stay up, uh, uh, and this precious fairy word that you deliver. Some message I consider as my weapon when the enemy comes stretching and protecting. Cup is running over, need a boat. You can never overdose on Holy Ghost. Living water got the overflow. Revelation chapter 22. It's the beginning of the end. Yeah. We're living in an open day. Yeah. Study scripture, bring 
a free 